Now is a good time to start utilizing Bootstrap so that we can give our website a better visual kind of element, um, make it look good really quickly. So I'm going to show you how to utilize Bootstrap to your advantage. So I'm going to open up the theme under WP Content, and then Themes, Custom Theme, and then index.php. This is kind of the only page we're working with right now. I'm going to run the project so that I can see it. And I get this link right here. And then I say open. Okay, so this is our home page right now. So let's add some bootstrap to make this look good. If I pull up getbootstrap.com and then head over to CSS, you'll see there is a grid system. Okay, and so Bootstrap is going to change over time. Right now we're looking at the documentation for version 3. It's going to change to version 4 pretty soon, and it's going to keep going. Uh, so you don't have to worry about going to the website right now, but I'm just going to show you how it works, how you go to the website, kind of read about what you want to utilize, and then apply it. So they have a grid system built in, and what that means is that we can use this kind of imaginary grid. It looks kind of like this, a 12 column grid in the case of Bootstrap 3. And as you shrink down the website, it'll adapt responsively. So it fits on iPads, mobile devices, whatever. Your, your website will always look good because it will be part of this grid system. And it's also easy for you to kind of space out, okay, do you want to center something occupying the middle four? Do you want to kind of occupy the left eight and leave a sidebar on the right four? Uh, and you'll get the picture here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and add the container class. The way you get the grid system to work is you have to start out by adding a container class. Okay, so we're going to do this. You'll see how it works. If I go over to the body, okay, remember the body tags, anything that's inside the body tags, that's what shows up in this white area over here on the screen, the main part of the browser window. So inside of there, I'm going to add a div. And divs are the most common tag in HTML. And we're going to say container inside of this class right here in quotation marks. OK. And I'm going to grab this closing div tag and just cut it and add it to just above the footer code right there. OK. So we have an opening div tag with a class called container and then closing div tag. So make sure your code looks like that. And then I'm going to highlight all of this PHP in the middle, the loop, and I'm going to tab it inward. Remember, this section right here is called the loop. That's what's outputting our two blog posts that we have. OK, so it should be looking like this now. Remember to pause the screen if you need to. I'm going to save this. My server is running. So if I go over and refresh, now look, you've got this margin on your left, and there's an imaginary one over here on the right that you can't see. And the cool thing is if I shrink this down, it's always going to stay responsive. It's going to stay as part of the kind of responsive grid system that we were looking at. So if I shrink it down, you'll see the words never get cut off. Even if it's the size of a mobile phone, it will always look good no matter what. So that's the benefit of using that container class. So now we've got a site that has margins. And you know, a lot of sites do leave a margin on the left and the right. So this is kind of a standard, if you will.